नमो बुद्धाय दिस इज अभिनव एंड आई वेलकम यू नाउ लेट अस डिस्कस मिडिल डिस्कोर्स इज 79 द टाइटल ऑफ द डिस्कोर्स इज द शॉर्टर डिस्कोर्स विद सकुलदई एंड वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस द लॉन्गर डिस्कोर्स विद सकुलदई सम वीडियोस बैक एंड इट्स सकुलदई सूत्र कुल सकुलदई सूत्र इज आल्सो द नेम ऑफ दिस डिस्कोर्स नाउ दिस डिस्कोर्स इज बेसिकली दिस इंटरेक्शन ऑफ बुद्ध विद वंडरर सकुलदई एंड बुद्ध uh went up to meet uh, sakuldai who was uh, sitting with a large assembly of wanderers and uh, he came he saw the buddha and he 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 he, he respected the buddha so so then uh, buddha says that what were you discussing what conversation was left unfinished so okay the link to the entire discourse is given in the description you can also read this discourse and get your own insights okay i'm just sharing a learning summary of this discourse so he said sakulai said that please leave what uh, leave aside what because they were just discussing some low talk and all they were doing so he said that when buddha comes in uh, at the discussion then everyone of us uh, uh, you know because they were all his students so he said forget uh, about what we were discussing but when buddha comes we all you know sit up and take note of what buddha is saying so buddha said okay tell me what you want me to speak about what the more topic you want me to speak about so he said that uh, there was some someone who was claiming to be all knowing and all seeing no to know and see everyone everything with without exception he says that knowledge and vision constantly and continually present to me while walking standing sleeping and waking when i asked him a question about the past they dodged the issue distracted the discussion with irrelevant points and displayed annoyance hate and bitterness uh Uh, so that reminded me of the buddha that let let me go and check with the buddha on this so uh, buddha said who was the one that he made that made the claim and behaved so he said it was the jain ascetic of the natika natika clan so he was referring to lord mahavira who was making this claim so he says that uh, so now buddha's response on this particular thing is and buddha never claimed that he is all knowing all seeing buddha says that uh, udai someone who can recollect their many kinds of past lives might ask me a question about the past right so buddha is saying someone who can recollect their past many kinds of past lives may ask me the question and or i might ask them the question about their past lives that is they are the right people whom we can discuss about these issues i can guide them or they can ask me or buddha is saying someone with a clear voice that is purified and superhuman understands how sentient beings are born according to their deeds might ask me a question about the future or might i might ask them a question about the future so buddha is basically here telling that you know to an ordinary mortal these things cannot be discussed you have to be either at that level and then that conversation can be had but then now buddha is like changing his topic see buddha's always teaching was on how to come out of suffering right he always insisted that let's not go into these metaphysical things and about the past or the future these are all you know wrong views where what was i in the past what was i in the what will i where will i be in the future buddha says look at right now what is happening with you right how things are arising and falling away bring your focus to the now so then buddha says nevertheless udai leave aside the past and the future i shall teach you the dhamma now buddha is teaching the dhamma it's a very very important line that buddha says when this exists that is due to the arising of this that arises when this doesn't exist that is not due to the cessation of this that ceases so now buddha is not not telling him the actual facts of what was that uh, sakuldai's uh, uh, past and lives and everything buddha is here talking about the principle that of dependent origination that means when this arises right so this is this whole chain of dependent origination with 12 links where the first the in the link in the chain is ignorance when ignorance arises then you know simultaneously craving arises contact arises feelings arises craving arises and all these things are to suffering so buddha is trying to take him in this direction that when one thing arises rest all things follow when one thing is ceased then everything else is ceased this contains actually the entire knowledge of the buddha and this is uh, in one of the discourses ananda said that uh, yes this is a easy concept so buddha admonished ananda that this is not an easy concept to understand this dependent origination this is called dependent origination or dependent co arising this is this requires some effort 
to understand, some practice to understand. But once Buddha says, you understand dependent origination, you understand my teaching. Or reverse way also is there. If you understand my teaching, then you will understand dependent origination. So this is how important this concept is. Right? When this arises, that arises. When this doesn't arise, when this ceases to arise, that also ceases to arise. Right? Okay. So now he was confused. Udayi was confused. Right? Because he was not at that level of the Buddha. So he says, Sir, I cannot even recall the features and details what I have undergone in this creation. How can I possibly recollect many kinds of past lives? And now what you are telling me, what this arises, when this arises, that is, and due to the arising of this, that arises. Now I am even more confused. So, so then Buddha is talking about uh, this thing that uh, perhaps he said, I can satisfy the Buddha by answering question about my own tradition. So he said, Buddha said, okay, Udayi, what is your tradition? He said, my tradition is ultimate splendor, ultimate splendor. So Buddha then, there is a series of questions that Buddha asked about the meaning of splendor, which he was not able to explain, right? And then he said, okay, I'm sorry, my teaching, this, it is, uh, I say in my tradition that my tradition is of ultimate splendor, but when pursued, pressed, grilled on my own tradition, I turn out to be void, hollow and mystical. So Udai was that way very, very mature that he realized that when Buddha pressed him, grilled him about the word or the meaning of the word splendor through the various analogies, he was like fell flat. Uh, then Buddha asked second thing, second question. Is there a world of perfect happiness? Is there a grounded path for realizing a world of perfect happiness? He says, yes, sir. In my tradition. So he was following a particular tradition. He was teaching a set of students and they were following a particular tradition. So he said, yes, sir, there is a world of perfect happiness and there is a grounded, grounded path for that. So he, Buddha said, what is the grounded path? He said, it's when someone gives up killing living creatures, stealing, sexual misconduct and lying and they proceed, proceed having undertaken some kind of a mortification. That is the grounded path for realizing. Now, now see Buddha, how Buddha, you know, you know, cuts the argument. Now Buddha says, when someone refrains from killing living creatures, is that self perfectly happy at that time? He said, no, sir, it's a life of pleasure and pain, right? So even if I refrain from li killing living creatures, I still have my pleasure and my pain in my life. Similar, Buddha said, for stealing, sexual misconduct, lying, and even mortification. In mortification, there is more pain than happiness. So then, so then Uday realized. Now, Uday was a smart chap. He was understanding. He had this maturity. He said, the blessed one has cut short the discussion. The holy one has cut short the discussion. That means, the, whole, the holy one has told me how much, you know, deep I am in my argument. So, so then he understood that that is what he is, what tradition he is from, the teachings of that tradition, they are not very clear. They, they say that it is the perfect happiness, but there is no perfect happiness in doing those things. Right? So, then he asked the Buddha, now Buddha, please you tell, what is the perfect, Grounded path for the realizing of perfect happiness. Now, listen to what Buddha says. It's when a mendicant, quite secluded from sensual pleasures, secluded from unskillful qualities, enters and remains in the first absorption. This is the first jhana, first absorption. As the placing of the mind and keeping it connected are, as the placing of the mind and keeping it connected are stilled, they enter and remain in the second absorption. With the fading away of rapture, they enter and remain in the third absorption. This is the grounded path for realizing a world of perfect happiness. So then, so this is, this Buddha is talking about uh, 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 the various absorptions. That one, when you do your meditation, then there are different levels to you go. Right? So, Sakulde said that uh, this is happiness realized. No, this is not a path. This is happiness realized. No. So, so Sakulde said, what is then the point of a perfectly happy world realized, right? This is the path that you've told. So Buddha says, it's when giving up and, so Buddha basically says, when you remain, enter, till you enter in the third absorption, you are like following a path. That's the grounded path. And fourth absorption when you re reach, when a mendicant enters and remains in the fourth absorption, that is, there are deities who have been reborn in a perfectly happy world. The mendicant associates with them, converses and engages in discussion. That means there are higher realms. When a mendicant enters the fourth absorption, he can contact those deities who are there in the perfect realms. And even it's like said that Buddha, right now, he is there in the Tusita heaven and he is teaching the Dhamma in that realm. Right? Uh, so, 
again, it's like said, I just read somewhere, that then you can contact the deities, you can discuss and you can continue your dharma work at that level. At this point, a perfectly happy world has been realized. Right? So, uh, Udai said, so the manic surely mendicants must lead the spiritual life under the Buddha for the sake of realizing this perfect happy world. Now, see, understand here, here Buddha says, no, the mendicants don't lead the spiritual life under me for the sake of realizing this perfectly happy world. Please understand here, even that perfectly happy world is within samsara, is still the suffering continues for the person. Even in higher realms, Buddha's teaching is what? Taking the person out of the samsara and into Nibbana. Nibbana is where the person doesn't come back. There is no re-existence in any of the realms. So, Buddha says there are other things that are finer for the sake of which the mendicants leave. Now, what are the fi finer things? So, here Buddha is talking about that realized one who arises in the world, perfected, fully awakened Buddha, accomplished in knowledge and conduct, supreme guide for those who wish to train, teacher of gods and humans. Now, those Buddha is talking about the realized ones, they give up the five hindrances, corruptions of the heart, right? So, and secluded, they remain in the first, second, third, fourth absorption. When the mind is immersed in samadhi, they get the three knowledges. So, Buddha is talking about the three knowledges that he got, right? And then their mind becomes purified completely. They understand that rebirth is ended, spiritual journey has been completed, what had to be done has been done. There is no return to any state of existence. This too is one of the finer things. These are the finer things for the sake of which the mendicants lead a spiritual life under me. Right? So then, so basically Buddha was saying that my mendicants who are there with me live for that state, that arhanship. And in various discourse Buddha has clarified, it's not one, two, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred. Many, many mendicants have achieved full arhanthood following his teachings. So when Sakuldari listened that, he said, excellent sir, excellent. And he said, I seek refuge for you in your teaching and in your Sangha. Please let, let me seek ordination. But then when he said this, his assembly of all students, he said, no, no, sir, please, you are a teacher for us. Don't, you know, don't leave us like this and become a student of Buddha. Please continue your teaching. So this is what in the final thing in the discourse, it said that that's how the wanderer Sakuldai's own assembly prevented him from leading a spiritual life under the Buddha, right? Because he had those compulsions. So maybe another way we can also think is that Sakuldai had a lot of following who did not let him lead the spiritual life. We don't have any such problem. Now we are on the path and maybe you are watching this video till this time. We are so, so fortunate that we are under the Buddha. Just keep our spiritual journey under the Buddha. Keep following what Buddha's teachings are and we will also realize that ultimate thing right the arhanship right so this is just some sharing from me i hope it helped in some way uh, do um, uh, read the discourse at your end and do share your insights your learnings from this discourse thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya